This week on HomeKit News, the Zemi Smart Zigbee Hub and Smart Switches with HomeKit. So what we have for you today is the new Zigbee Hub from Zemi Smart, which works with HomeKit, as you can see on the box. Now it also works with Amazon and Google, as well as a few other platforms, although we'll only be concentrating on HomeKit at this time. Things start off well with an instance of a HomeKit code, which is a welcome sight. And the first thing we see is the hub itself, which we'll put to one side and come back to shortly. Next is a small English manual with another copy of the HomeKit code, along with some extras to get your hub up and running. In the box, we get a couple of cables, the first of which is a rather short Ethernet cable to connect the hub to your router or modem, although this device can connect wirelessly. There's also a USB to micro USB cable to power the hub, although you should note no USB power supply is provided. Finally, three roll plugs and screws are included. These are designed to be used with the provided wall plate that allows you to mount the hub to a wall if you so wish. And yes, that's another instance of the HomeKit code, in case you were wondering. Obviously this hub can sit pretty much anywhere, but it's not often you get the opportunity to wall mount something like this. So this is a small but welcome addition in my opinion. So let's have a closer look at the hub before I move on to the switches that I mentioned at the start of the video. There's not a lot to see, but at the back you get a pairing button, an ethernet port, and a socket for the micro USB cable for power. The hub itself is quite small, measuring only 90 millimeters in diameter and just 21 millimeters deep. The only other thing to distinguish this very plain looking plastic puck is an LED ring that encircles most of the device, which should be green in normal operation. The LED ring is not exposed to HomeKit and can't be controlled or adjusted in any way. Onto the smart switches, which Zemi Smart kindly provided in order for me to actually test the hub. These are designed for North America or places that use these size switches, like Taiwan for example, and we have three separate switches, all of which outwardly look the same thanks to the packaging, but are actually different in terms of their configuration. So if we open the first of these, this one's a single gang triple switch, something you don't see too often for HomeKit smart switches. We also have a double switch here, and it should be noted these are all single gang, but ZemiSmart actually also make a four switch version, which is great. And finally, a single switch with the button taking up the whole front panel in this case. As you can see, these all follow the same basic styling and are all fairly unassuming in their design, which I think is a good thing. It should be noted that whilst there's no HomeKit logo on these boxes, they are HomeKit compatible. A closer look now at the switches and starting with the dimensions, which will fit North American size back boxes without any issues. All the switches are 118 millimeters wide, 74 millimeters tall, and just 11 millimeters deep. All the switches come with LEDs to show the status, as well as allowing you to see them in the dark, although these can be adjusted in the settings, which I'll demonstrate shortly. Finally, whilst these will fit standard back boxes, they do take up the whole front, so they're not compatible with Decora style plates, which you can see demonstrated here. I should mention these switches don't require a neutral, which is good news for me and others I imagine, although neutral versions are also available. They also don't have an earth terminal given that these are mostly made of plastic. Just to demonstrate the hub is legitimately HomeKit compatible, I'll show you the installation procedure, which is as standard as it gets given that we use a HomeKit QR code. The device is correctly identified as a bridge, and once connected you just add it to a room and you're pretty much done. To check that the hub has been added to HomeKit, just go into your home settings, select hubs and bridges, and the hub should be listed there. Click and you can see further details, and if this hub wasn't certified, it would state it here, which I'm glad to say it doesn't. Next, I'll add the hub to the Toya Smart App so we can add child devices later. Autoscan should find your hub, and once detected and selected, you just need to bind it to the app and assign it to a home and room. You will need to set up an account though. To add a device, just ensure that it's in pairing mode and the app and the hub should discover it. As with the hub, you select the device when it shows up and allow it to be bound. I've added a double switch and as you can see, the interface in the app comes up. There are a couple of features here which I'll touch on shortly, but first in the home app, you can see that the switch shows up automatically. Long pressing on the tile reveals that it is indeed a double switch with two separate toggles, allowing control of each switch independently. If we go into the settings, we can actually set the device to show as two separate switches, each with their own tile, allowing me even greater control. I'll now quickly demonstrate the switches in use along with the noise generated when turning them on and off. 
The switches feel slightly soft when pressing, but that's no bad thing. In the Toy app you can see they're quite responsive with very little delay. I also mentioned three options for the LEDs, with the standard being the LEDs on when the switches are off, but we can also set the opposite so that the LEDs are off when the switches are off. Finally, we can also totally disable the LEDs if we wish, so that they don't show regardless of the state of the switch. As these are now in HomeKit, we also get Siri control, which I'll quickly demonstrate using a HomePod Mini. Turn the main lights on. Turn the main lights off. So as you can see, it works as expected. There are devices listed on the Zemismart website which the company state will work with HomeKit via the hub, and there's also documentation that other devices will work if they're certified by Toya, although at this time it's difficult to tell which of these are. Finally onto the pros and cons which will cover the hub and the switches in this case. If you like Zigbee like I do then this has a lot of potential for more choices with devices as well as potentially lower price points. The hub uses the latest Zigbee 3 standard, so even though the chatter is all about thread right now, Zigbee still has a lot to offer. The only potential downside is what is and what isn't compatible right now, although this will hopefully change and improve as time goes on. Onto the switches, and it's great to have more no neutral switch options, as well as choices for triple and even quadruple switches. As far as I can tell, so far there are no regional restrictions on devices that work with this hub, which takes a lot of guesswork out of the equation. And finally, onto switch design, which is a personal thing, of course, but the large switches do make pressing them a lot easier, as well as still being understated in their design. That's our overview of the Zemi Smart Hub and Switches, but we will follow up with some more Zemi Smart devices soon. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. So until the next video, stay safe and be kind to animals.